Привет, guys, and welcome back to another video this week. Um, we will recreate the Energia Buran rocket in this video, or the, the Energia rocket and the Buran orbiter. So a snowstorm and a bit of energy at the same time. Who doesn't like that? So you can see the construction of the orbiter in the background, and you can also see the reference photos I took for making my recreation. Uh, it's a real photo and a CGI photo who like, it helped me a bit to uh, get the shape right. But first, uh, a bunch of information about the real-life Buran, because this spaceship, if you believe it or not, from the Soviet Union, flew one time, was hugely successful, and then got lost in the dirt because money had to be cut. But first, the program started in 1976 and set out to build a rival to the American space shuttle because the Soviets feared the military potential the shuttle would bring, which later turned out to n never really be used. But at the time, it was believed that the US could like, fish uh, satellites out of orbits from the Soviet Union, and they didn't want to leave that unrivaled, so they started building the Energia Buran. Uh, the Energia Buran was a modular system actually you can see it on the photo it has the space shuttle quote-unquote space shuttle attached to it but actually there are other prototypes you know, other ideas where there is like a, a black cargo bay attached just like the heavy lift launch vehicle the shuttle the based heavy lift launch vehicle uh, where you don't need an orbiter so uh, sadly this never really materialized because in 1993 the program was cancelled. But nevertheless, on the 15th of November 1988, the first and only unmanned, this is really important, unmanned test flight of the Energia Buran system was held and it was hugely successful. An unmanned system, the space shuttle only could be launched manned. Uh, the, the first test flight of the space shuttle was manned and the first test flight of the Energia Buran wasn't. So, Technologically speaking, the Buran was a lot more advanced than the shuttle. Uh, it, ha it even could auto-land itself. You have to keep in mind, 1988, and the Soviet Union had computers that were the size of a sports hall, and they managed to do this with those horribly inefficient computers. Pretty impressive. So, if I woke in your interest and you want to see a Buran in real life, Either you sneak into Baikonur in Kazakhstan, which is a bit risky, uh, or you go into the museum next to Kazakhstan, which is very small. Or if you live in Mannheim, Germany, there's a museum, the Technical Museum Spire. They have a Buran on display. Uh, I, a real one, actually, but it's a bit um, renovated. And it has uh, great information at it. it it's a generally a complete museum about vehicles. So if you're interested, check this out. I think it's kind of funny that to see the, the Soviet space shuttle you have to go to Germany. But okay, I mean, I mean it's cool, it's in my vicinity, maybe I will go there. But yeah, aside from that, back to the footage again. Now we're building the boosters and the engine as well. Uh, the engines of the booster, which are difficult to get right, but I managed to do it at the end. Another thing is that I haven't shown the payload. And the payload will be shown later in the video. I can say um, surely that it is a cool payload, definitely. It's a first for Marvin Airlines on this safe, or Marvin Air and Space Lines, I call this safe file. It's a first. I do something that we haven't done in any other video in KSP2. But yeah, here you can see how I made this with the engines. I also tilted the engine mount of the Energia main stage a little bit to get the center of thrust uh, aligned with the center of mass. And after I got the engine somewhat right, uh, I added a lot of struts, a lot of struts. Like, you can't have enough struts in this game. Just add more than you think. If you think you have enough struts, you should probably add 100% more struts. And yeah, then let's get to the launch because the vehicle is done.
And here we go, we have lift off of Energia Buran, we cleared the tower and now we are on our way to space. You heard the countdown, I had to uh, speak the countdown in myself. Well, I couldn't find a good countdown in Russian for a rocket launch. All of them had some English in them, which ruined them completely. Or you can just, you couldn't hear anything, it was just because the microphone was so shit. So yeah, I hope it's acceptable. If, you, if you're able to speak Russian, write it in the comment section. But yeah, here, we are accelerating. Uh, the, my Buran has a thrust to weight ratio of about two, and so we can accelerate fast. You can also see we have our throttle at only 80%, because it would have just been ridiculously fast. And even now, we, it was pretty fast off the pad, and with a higher TW article, it's been even more faster. So, uh, but here booster separation is incoming. Can we separate the four boosters? I had chills while separating it. It was pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. But yeah, here we go, the last fuel is draining out. And now, can we decouple? It worked. It worked. Nothing exploded. That's, uh, okay, kind of. But it was behind us, so how, like, should I even care? They aren't reusable. No. So, continuing further, we are going for a pretty high apoapsis. It has something to do with the payload. Yeah, the payload, you, you haven't seen it yet, haven't you? But then we can stage away the main tank, who theoretically should have run out of fuel, but in this case didn't. But anyway, uh, I wanted to get the flight profile right. I didn't want to get into orbit with the tank. Then we can plot our way to orbit and reveal the cargo that's inside. So let's open up those hatches. And it's a space station module. So we, we will put the first ever Marvin space station in KSP2 in our orbit. And you can see it's only one module. Um, it was pretty tricky getting this into orbit because my craft was created before the patch. Uh, so it had all the bugs, like I couldn't decouple a, a bunch of times and all that, all that shenanigan. So uh, we can expand it in the future. You can write in the comments which module should we attach to the attach a refueling tank, an artificial gravity ring once this becomes possible, whatever you want. But yeah, then we can stage away, or not. <laughs> but yeah, we we got it somehow. I just decoupled there and. Uh, it was one of those times when it actually worked, I was pretty glad about it. And we can RCS the module away and transfer Bob into the module as well. Mm, so we have two Kerbals on board of the module. You might ask yourself, you don't have escape pods, Marvin? No, I don't have escape pods. The reason is simple, we don't have re-entry heating and the Kerbals, they can just survive infinite amounts of damage. But yeah, now lowering our apoapsis and periapsis as well. We will go in a, in a lower orbit now and then we will start the landing. But first we have to time warp until we can see the KSC and now we can start our descent. You saw I changed a bunch of settings with the, with the roll and the pitch maneuvers. Um, but yeah, the front wings, the black ones, they are uh, rolling and the other ones are pitching. I couldn't get it better, it, it, it was buggy. But yeah, then, how do I land this thing? I mean, what I do in KSP2, and it has a reason that I do it like that, is that I pull up the nose 30 to 45 degrees and stay in the upper atmosphere as long as possible. And then when I'm almost over the KSC, point down at a 60 to 80 degree angle um, shoot down towards the KC, pull up and land. The reason is that the drag is just so incredibly high in KSP2 at sea level that I really don't want to glide through this drag. So that's why I pitch up a lot and then just cut down completely, just um, fly almost into the ground and then pull up. Uh, that works good. Uh, it's very weird, so we have more drag, but at the same time our vehicles can glide a lot better, which is weird, because I, I guess the wings are better now. But get ready for a butter landing, guys. This landing was incredibly smooth for a shuttle landing, like, uh, smoother than what I've done in KSP-1 ever. You can see we can glide, we can glide, we're already at 60 meters a second, which is pretty slow. 
gliding, gliding, and then touchdown of the Buran. We have landed it. Parachute deploys and the parachutes deploy and we can break and land the craft and then we can get back to the space station and do a little EVA uh, to yeah, kind of like, get used to EVA EVAing from the from the crew station as like a little exercise for the Kerbal Nauts. Uh, but yeah, here our space station is, let's make a little photo for, I don't know, for, for um, what was it called? For the space agency of the Soviet Union, we can make a little photo of Bill in front of the space station. Here it is, isn't it cute? Then we can get in and goodbye guys. I hope you liked the video. See you next time. Bye.